TikTok, Chinese spyware. Some people say this is a national security risk. We've talked a lot about it here. A lot of other things are considered major national security risks, but access to the entire population's data being piped over to China evidently takes a lot to get Congress to act. That being said, there was some activity in the Senate. You see this gentleman here, Senator Josh Hawley. He drafted a bill called the No TikTok on Government Devices Bill, which we are going to read through. It passed in the Senate. It's Senate Bill 1143. We've got reaction from Marco Rubio, reaction from the White House, the State Department, and of course, Nancy Pelosi, because if the Senate passed this bill, then it's got to go over right across the way there at Capitol Hill, land in the desk of the Senate, of the House of Representatives, and we'll see what they do because the Democrats are still in control. But first, what the heck is the problem with TikTok? Why is everybody so concerned about it? You know, it's just a bunch of people dancing around, hopping around like, you know, weirdos, right? No, it's actually something that is a big problem. In fact, some people are calling this digital fentanyl that is taking over the brains and corrupting our children. And so let's listen to this clip. This is a montage of a number of people explaining why TikTok is so problematic. We need to ban TikTok. TikTok is digital fentanyl, addicting our kids. And all of the data, right? Being able to scan people's faces, pipe in their locations, grab their contact lists, sho shove all of that into the coffers of the Chinese Communist Party. We've already covered here, right? That, that is absolutely happening. Even the ByteDance CEO who interfaces with TikTok, right? It's the company that owns the TikTok app. Even they were saying very carefully with their words that there was mechanisms by which Beijing could get access to all of the data. So major, major access point, right? And if you, you may disagree that it's a, it's a problem at all, who cares? Whatever the Chinese are doing, it's up to the parents or it's up to the kids or it's up to uh, our, you know, whatever. Maybe it's nobody's fault. Maybe nobody's responsible for it. I happen to disagree with that, but it seems like this is kind of a cohesive issue. Like there should be little debate about some of these concerns. Even me, the skeptic of the FBI and Christopher Ray, have to listen to this and agree Christopher Ray is asked questions about TikTok's influence, and obviously he has no choice but to answer and be perfectly honest. The app could be a catastrophe for American national security. Uh, uh, taking the first question, I would say we do have national security concerns, uh, at least from the FBI's end, uh, about TikTok. They uh, include the possibility that the Chinese government could use it to control data collection on millions of users or control the recommendation algorithm, uh, which could be used for influence operations if they so chose, or uh, to control software on millions of devices. Uh influence, like they could pipe in, you know, extra concerns about abortion or something, you know, to certain age groups in certain states, you know, just kind of adjust the algorithm so that more people are concerned about uh, evil Republicans, you know, taking away their rights. All you got to do is just uh, move that knob a little bit, you know, and something like that might change the course of an election. Uh, which gives that opportunity to potentially technically compromise personal devices. So there's a number of concerns there as to what is actually happening and actually being done. Uh, that's probably something that would be uh, better addressed in uh, in a close uh, classified setting. And I could see what information we might be able to share that way. But that's probably not much more than I could add to that other than to yeah. say it is certainly something that's on our radar and we share your concerns. We share your concerns on our radar. Director of the FBI says, well, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of ways they could absolutely wreck 
America. But one of them we can't really talk about unless it's behind closed doors. And so we'll see what we can do to accommodate if you uh, take us behind the scenes. So those are the concerns. I think every which way you look, if you've ever even used the app, right? If you actually use TikTok, you can feel how addictive it is. You can sit there and get on there and recognize that two hours went by, three hours go by, right? It's many people at one point, they were saying this was crossing the watch time of YouTube. This is cro cro crossing the watch time of all TV, right? It's physically sort of a funneling dopamine hits every video to your brain. And a lot of other companies are trying to replicate this, right? It's YouTube is trying to do the same thing. Facebook has been trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to get you, you know, addicted to these platforms, so to speak. And I don't think that that is not a concern, right? That's a concern. It's a sort of a global concern, privacy data, what these tech companies are doing with the data, who's in control of it. How are they manipulating it? We just saw what they did with Twitter. So it's, you know, it's, it's not necessarily that this is a, only a CCP TikTok issue. I think it goes across the board. The problem with this one is who's at the top, right? At least we know Zuckerberg and we've got some regulatory concern over him. Same with Twitter, same with all of the other sort of domestic United States, big tech conglomerates, but there's none of that in China and they have direct interests you know, that are opposed to the United States. So the fact that it's a concern, I think has been well-established uh, across the aisle. Everybody sort of is recognizing this and the Senate took action. So we finally see the government do something. It's not often that we see actual progress on anything here, but we'll see how far this goes because there's still a long way to go. But Holly announced this today. He says, hello, America. Our bill, my bill to ban TikTok on government devices passes the Senate unanimously. Unanimously? You're telling me you got all of the entire government in the Senate, all of the senators to agree on this thing? Wow. Tonight, Josh Hawley billed a ban TikTok on government devices passed unanimously for the second time. Bill would follow up on steps already taken by the State Department, the Department of Homeland Security, the DOD, and the TSA to ban the app on all devices. And Holly, right, it's funny, he actually posts his Twitter here. He actually posts his tweet. So the tweet is sort of a better press release than the press release. But he says, TikTok is a Trojan horse for the CCP. It's a major security risk until it's forced to sever ties with China completely, no place on government devices. And now it's time for Biden to do the same. He says states across the country are banning TikTok. Biden should do it as well. Holly originally introduced the bill. It passed unanimously back in August. We had other senators who joined in. And so the full text of the bill is available, which we will read now, this is the ban TikTok on government applications on government phones act. You see, this says to prohibit certain individuals from downloading or using TikTok on any device issued by the United States or a government corporation. So be it enacted in the house that we're going to call this thing, the no TikTok on government devices app in this definition under section two, this is prohibition of the use. The term is called covered application, right? So they're going to define what is actually prohibited. It means a social networking service, TikTok, or any successor application or service developed or created by ByteDance, right? So if they change the name or if they manipulate it or whatever, it'll still be prohibited. The term executive agency, same meaning under US code. The term information technology, same meaning under US code. Now the prohibition. Here's, if this passes, right, this has to go over to the House of Representatives and then be signed into law by Joe Biden, who we don't know if he is compromised or not. But they talk about the prohibition. So if this does pass, this will be the law. Not later than 60 days after the date of the enactment of this act, the director of the Office of Management and Budget, so the OMB, in consultation with the Administrator of General Services, of Cybersecurity and Security Agency, the Director of National Intelligence, the Secretary of Defense, and others shall develop standards and guidelines for executive agencies requiring the removal of covered application from information technology. All right, so they defined all those terms. Information technology, we just carry that definition all the way down, just put it right down there, right? So we define it right there. So it's basically the entire stack, like everything, right? Get that app out of everything. It's not allowed to touch anything. And seems pretty comprehensive. So in other words, 60 days, you'll have the guidelines. So develop the standards. So, you know, in other words, this has to go over to like the United States mint. Okay. There's like the mint that mints the money. Do your employees have TikTok on their phone? Okay. Well, make sure that they know they got to get it off there. Well, what's the rule? 
Well, they have to go and tell you, you have to tell them, uh, get the app off your phone and have them sign this confirmation that they remove the app from the phone and uh, you'll check the phone. And if they don't do it, these are the consequences. If they don't remove the app from the phone, termination in 30 days or whatever it is, right? So what are the standards for getting it gone? We also have the national security and the research exceptions. They say, well, all right, we'll let you have TikTok on your phone if you're doing it for law enforcement activities. Like if you're trying to set up honeypots on there or, uh, you know, create fictional white supremacist governor kidnapping plots. You know, if you need the police or the FBI to be on there, they'll definitely do that. National security interests, activities and security researchers, right? So they can all get on there and do whatever they want. For any unauthorized use of covered application, they need to develop risk mitigation actions for the use passed on the Senate December 14th, 2022. Secretary, you can see that's the short title on the bill. And so that is now heading over to the House of Representatives. And so we'll see what the House of Representatives does with this shortly. But many people are celebrating this. They're very excited about it. One senator is named Marco Rubio, and he has had a lot of concerns with China for quite some time and TikTok in particular. And Rubio says that China has been interfering and meddling in American affairs. Well, what we ban is their ability to make money in the country. And the reason is because it's uh, basically a wholly owned subsidiary of the Communist Party of China. You know, one, th one thing, it's, it's not about the content, ultimately. I mean, we have free speech in this country. It's about how the right. data that's on it is being used. So that's number one. Some people would say to me, well, what do we care if the Chinese government has access to the, the data on the phone of a 16-year-old teenager somewhere in America? Uh, it's not about the 16-year-old teenager. It's about millions yeah. of 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 30-year-olds. And what they watch. Dumping all kinds of data that the government of China gets access to on location, your pictures, your text, your consumer behavior, what the algorithm is learning from you. And then the other thing is, and this is what's really stunning to me, the, the Chinese tried to interfere in our midterm elections. They were putting out wow. videos discouraging people, and they were using the algorithms to do this, discouraging people from voting on, on, on a bipartisan basis or nonpartisan basis. If, and that's why I tell people, if TikTok was a Russian company, there would be an FBI raid of their headquarters. Uh, at least they would be calling for it on the left. So I think everyone agrees there are a privacy danger to America, to our national security. We shouldn't have the Communist Party of China having access to a treasure trove of American data that they can use to try to influence and divide us at the same time as they collect valuable information now and for the future. Well, yeah, yeah, we banned RT. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to get at least one Democrat on your side on this, are you? Yeah, apparently all of them. I think we will. Uh, look, I think we have a lot of Democrat support for the concern about it. And you know, Mark Warner is the chairman of the Intelligence Committee. Him and I sent a letter together asking the Justice Department and the intelligence agencies to speed up this review. But I don't think anything's going to come of it. I really Right. That's the other part of this is there's an entire narrative that we're going to see in a minute from the White House, the White House is saying, well, we're investigating this. We're, we're seeing what they did. We've got a lot of uh, inquiries out there and uh, they're looking at this and CISA's is looking at that and the CFIUS is over here and the CFIUS is over there. And eventually we'll know what to do about this. But they're saying, well, you know, th this is kind of a real you know, clear and present danger. And OK, like we understand that you need to investigate. All right. But are you going to do anything at the conclusion of the investigation? Or is this just sort of kicking the can down the road to try to stall out any action? And that's not going to be able to be accomplished by them. We see that Rubio and Holly and the Senate just passed this thing. So now whether they like it or not, this big spicy meatball lands on the desk of Pelosi while she's still in office. I really don't. I don't think at the end of the day that anything's going to come of the security review or that anything they do will take care of this problem. I think we have to begin with a very basic principle. Companies under the control of the Chinese Communist Party should not have access, unfettered access, to the private data of millions and millions of Americans that they can then use against us for espionage, for foreign policy, for division. All right. So Rubio is taking it one step further. The act that was passed by Holly is saying, you know, it's just on government devices. Rubio says, let's take it out of the entire country. Right. They shouldn't have access to anybody. So just ban the app. Right. You just tell App Store, you tell Google this app is not allowed. Uh, it's a national security concern. It's literally, you know, gobbling up information. It's identifying people. It's doing facial recognition scans. It's listening to the devices. It's picking up your contacts. It's, you know, recording you surreptitiously, whatever. Ban it. And I think that's probably a good move. Uh, and I don't know why it's taking so long to do something like this, but I actually do know 
it's the federal government. So, of course, we're going to see what the Democrats have to say about that. A lot of reactions from the White House. We're going to ask ourselves if the State Department has a plan on this. And since it passed the Senate, is it going to go over to the House of Representatives? And what's the fearless, godlike leader, Nancy Pelosi, who just unveiled herself to America in a portrait? What is she going to do about this? Is she going to sign this into law? A lot of questions. We're going to take a look at all of them right after we check in with our friends over at Four Patriots because we know it's that time of year and you're looking for last minute gifts, gift ideas. You're wondering, what should we do? What should I buy? And, and let me tell you, nobody wants you know that nice Apple product or whatever it is because those won't feed you when our food supply breaks and crumbles. My friends, a food shortage could be coming. Even in the United States, experts have written about this as recently as July. Drought, inflation, even new policies are pushing America's food supply near its breaking point. That's why survival food is more important now than ever. And you can create your own stockpile of the best-selling four Patriot survival food kits ever. This is not ordinary food. We're talking about good for 25 years, super survival food. Hand-packed right in family-owned facilities in the United States, giving jobs to over 200 Americans. The kits are compact, they're sturdy, they're water-resistant, and they stack easily. They have different delicious breakfast, lunches, and dinners, and you can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. Just add boiling water, simmer, and serve. And right now, you can go to 4 Use code Robert to get 10% off your yeah. first purchase on anything in the store, including this three-month survival Look kit. Look at that thing. You'll get their famous guarantee Amazing. for an entire year after your order, plus free shipping on orders over $97. They're called Four Patriots because a portion of every sale is donated to charities who support our veterans and their families. Go to fourpatriots.com. Use code Robert to get 10% off. That's fourpatriots.com. Use code Robert. Start building your own stockpile today. today. Yeah, baby. Go get your four Patriots survival food. It's very important. Nobody wants to starve to death. Nobody needs that nice designer bag or that, you know, th those nice sunglasses or those AirPods. No, you need survival food so that you don't starve to death. All right. And so we have an entire reaction segment here because a lot of people really don't want to address the elephant in the room, which is that. Uh, TikTok is a disaster. And so we'll have uh, some clips here from the White House because uh, are they going to do anything about this? Well, doesn't seem like it. Karine Jean-Pierre asked questions from the media. You know, the TikTok app seems like it might be a big problem for the youth of America and for American national security, Karine. Is the Biden administration going to do anything about this now that the Senate has passed a ban? Go ahead, JJ. Um, I'm wondering if the White House has any reaction on two bills that moved through the U.S. Senate. One is on TikTok. The Senate voted to ban TikTok from all government-issued phones. Let's start with that one. Does the White House have feelings on that bill? So, um, as I've uh, as I've said before, uh, you know, um, want to be very careful on uh, commenting on any uh, specific legislation at this time. So, we'd refer you to Congress on the next steps. Come we on, we don't get involved in the process uh, as we've done in the past. But look, just more they're always involved in the process. They meddle in everything, and if the process doesn't go their way, they do it anyways. They don't care. So, they're always meddling in the process. But in this case, they don't want to comment on it, right? Because this just this just passed the Senate. Now it's going to work its way over to the House. And uh, I guess it's still true. It is still working its way through. But what's the opinion on this? If this was any other bill, right? If this was some other bill to, uh, you know, eject Donald Trump from outer space, okay, then she'd probably have a lot to say on it. But in this case, because it's Joe Biden's favorite country, they don't want to talk about it. More broadly, uh, there are a range of tech app applications and products that are not allowed to be used uh, on the White on the White House and other federal government work equipment for security reasons, including uh, TikTok. We will not go into any further details uh, about security policies that we have here, uh, but I'm not going to get into the process. Uh, I know that this Come just happened, on. so we're going to let Congress uh, move forward with their process on, position on that one. What about the Senate bill that would essentially halt um, <laughs> Huawei's access to U.S. banks? The Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is one of the sponsors of that bill. Does the White House have a position on that one? No, don't have a position on no that bill. one at no, this no. time from here. Okay. No, no idea. No position. Don't have really much to say about anything because uh, it's TikTok. And they're just going to let Congress sort itself out. Well, the question is going to be what happens when it lands on their desk, if it does land on their desk. 
because Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats will get their hands on it soon enough. But first, let's see what the State Department has to say. I mean, if Corrine Jean-Pierre doesn't have any guidance for us, does the State Department? Because we know others have said, like the FBI, we just heard, Christopher Wray said, yeah, pretty big issues here. If you want to know more about it, we've got private briefings that we can maybe do for you. If you ask nicely, we'll give it to you. But until then, we've got questions about diplomacy. What about the interface between the State Department and the Chinese? Is there anything that they know, anything that they're doing about this? State Department Ned is here, and he's asked a question about TikTok. The whole world knows it's a gigantic problem. So what is your boss, Anthony Blinken and Joe Biden, doing to solve it? A uh, question on China and election influence. Uh, Forbes reported last week that uh, the Chinese government was using a, a number of accounts on social media, specifically on TikTok, to distribute inflammatory, divisive uh, content, all types of disinformation ahead of the midterm elections. Oh, Reports of TikTok sharing disinformation and misinformation before the midterm elections. That should be like the end of the world, right? I mean, that should be the catastrophe of the century for the Biden administration. They have weaponized the whole DOJ and the entire FBI to go after misinformation. And they're having a level nine meltdown. Anthony Fauci is calling it a cesspool because Twitter was purchased by Elon. Misinformation and disinformation is like, the word du jour. It's like it, they can't for, they can't stop talking about it enough. But here, TikTok is doing it. And this fine gentleman is asking him a pertinent question about it. Uh, this comes off as very similar to what Russia did uh, in the 2016 election and subsequently. Uh, yeah. We're sanctioned for that. Great point. For that, uh, otherwise uh, punished. Uh, is there going to be any consequences for China for engaging in what seems to be very similar behavior? And additionally, is the administration considering any action regarding TikTok, specifically perhaps banning it or otherwise restricting it, given uh, security issues we're hearing about uh, regarding that app from the Chinese government? So the question is a little bit loud. He says, hey, Ned, when Russia so-called interfered with our election, you guys went nuclear. I mean, you're still a little bit pale from that whole saga back in 2016. You guys can't stop talking about it to this day. So now if this is the same thing happening, except this is TikTok now we're talking about. I mean, you've lost your mind. We're in like basically a global war with Russia right now because of their meddling and interference, you know, and all sorts of other things, certainly. But I mean, they've been, you know, the political scapegoat for the Democrats justified or not, whatever you say, they have been since 2016, right? They blame the Russians for Trump and they have kept that going for a long time. So now, right, if that's all based out of election interference and meddling from the Russians, if the Chinese are doing it, are you also going to melt down? Are we going to see something of a similar proportion? Uh, two parts of your questions I need to be careful about, uh, both parts because of equities that reside outside of, of this building. What? Um, on your first question, what uh, does that the even mean? Office of the Director of National Intelligence what does that uh, mean? conducts a review in the aftermath of uh, elections, midterm elections and, and presidential elections in this country. I'm not uh, in, uh, in, uh, prepared to speak to that. I don't believe that their report uh, has been finalized. Oh, or they're still yet. investigating. So oh, yeah. Deny when it comes to what they saw or what they did not see uh, when it comes to foreign, potential foreign influence in the 2022 midterm elections. Uh, we did, however, uh, see, and you may have seen as well, uh, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure uh, Security Agency, CISA's um, uh, joint bulletin uh, on October 6th of this year. They put out a public service announcement with the FBI. Uh, that detailed uh, foreign actors' likely use of information manipulation tactics uh, in advance of the midterm uh, elections. Uh, and I would refer you to that report for the assessment prior to the elections and, uh, of course, to the ODNI for uh, the report in the aftermath of the so, elections. So we don't uh, have anything to say. To TikTok, uh, the platform you referenced, I also need to be careful here Gosh. Uh, because uh, this is uh, a matter that uh, is uh, I would need to refer to to my commerce uh, department colleagues to weigh in no on. No answers. But, uh, I will say that uh, we are always concerned about uh, foreign actors' potential use of wow. uh, technology. Uh, Wow, that's really impressive. That was excellent. I, I, I mean, that was honestly excellent. He said literally nothing there, and he went two minutes and nineteen seconds. I, that's pretty dang impressive. Now, I think he's a Harvard guy or something. I don't know if they have like a whole semester on that, like talking without saying anything. I don't know how much, how, how many credits you need to graduate Harvard or something. I didn't go there, obviously. But this guy did. He went somewhere smart because he talked for two minutes and he said nothing. He said any, uh, any you know, sanctions, can't talk about it. 
Uh, any threats, can't talk about that. State Department still, you know, we're investigating, they're investigating, they're investigating. And if you're talking about the app, well, talk to the Commerce Department. <laughs> what? Talk to the Commerce Department. They don't do anything. What are you talking? We're talking to the State Department. This is a, this is the diplomatic issue between the United States and China. And he doesn't want to have any accountability at all. So uh, not unusual. Pretty amazing. They just clam up. Embarrassing. All right. So now we go back over to the House of Representatives. The fearless leader, the woman who is retiring and all of Congress stopped to admire her portrait, her oil gigantic you know, banner of her with lights all over the place and her holding the gavel. These people, just narcissistic maniacs, egomaniac and sociopaths are basically, you know, enjoying themselves. We'll just leave it there. It's a family show and it's pretty disgusting. But when she gets asked a real question, watch her shuffle in her podium. Very concerned. Pelosi, hello, before you leave, the Senate just did something pretty amazing. They passed unanimously, by the way, a ban on TikTok. Are you going to sign this when it comes across your desk? A lot of your colleagues have expressed concern about the Chinese influence of TikTok, the social yeah. media app. The Senate last night passed a bill that was banned. Better have some water on that one. Uh -oh, China. China question. Are you supportive of that effort in particular, but other efforts more broadly to curtail TikTok because of that relationship with the Chinese government? I haven't seen the legislation. Oh, you haven't? I, my understanding is... Oh, well, well, Nancy, it's like a page and a half, okay? We just read it here in less than two minutes. It's very short. What it says is no TikTok on government apps. That's it. Do you agree with that? What, yes or no? That there are provisions in the bill that... Um, do not deter our ability to, shall we say, from an intelligence standpoint and the rest still be able to track what we need to track. Okay, well, that's in there. Okay, she said, well, it, it it's, it's very difficult to understand what she said because I don't know if that's water or as many of you may have thought yourselves, uh, vodka. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see it in there. Yeah, I see it in the chat. Yeah, you get a little extra slurp there on the way out. But here she, right, I don't know what she says. Something about the, intel we want to make sure the intelligence communities can do what the intelligence communities uh, want to do. And of course, that's in there, right? There's a whole exception. It's actually on the second page of the four of them, right? And one of them's blank. So you see that that is, uh, it's very easy for her to read that. It doesn't have to be complicated. She's read a lot of bills in her 130 years in Congress. To, shall we say, from an intelligence standpoint and the rest still be able to track what we need to track. Yeah, they can. Don't worry about it. They do whatever but they want anyways. I'll take a look and see, checking with the administration. What? To, just in terms of language, not in terms of being opposed to the idea, but being specific about the, um, the language. We will leave here today for what's on the agenda now. I don't know that that will be on the agenda next week, but let's see. Okay, so she's going to check with the Biden administration, but she's also only going to talk to them about the language of the bill. And the bill is basically done, right? It's already done, uh, passed in the Senate. And yeah, Nancy Pelosi looks very interesting. I also saw this one of Pelosi. I don't know if you guys saw this clip. I was grabbing it while we were here. This came in from at Becker News. Pelosi, she wasn't really answering a lot of questions here. Somebody asked her. Yeah, what I'm going to do. Somebody asked Nancy Pelosi about finishing her term. Here's what she said. Will you commit to serving your full two-year term for the people of San Francisco? What is this? Okay. What is this? Listen, listen. What a crank. The question is, will you commit to serve your full two-year term now that you're retiring and now that your portrait's been unveiled? Will you commit to serving your full two-year term for the people of San Francisco? What is this? What is what this? Is this? Don't bother me with a question like that. Uh, <laughs> really? Uh, really? Okay? Is that what I'm going to do? Yeah. Madam, I don't, those kind of questions are such a waste of my time. No, I'm a, yes, sir. Oh gosh, what a waste of her time. Okay, so somebody's saying that there's no audio on that one for our locals, our locals friends, because I put it in the wrong browser. So let's pull that, let's play that one more time for the locals crew. My bad on the browser. You can't cross the browser streams. Term for the people. We'll do it one more time. This is Nancy Pelosi, very upset with a just loser reporter asking her a question. Can you believe this peasant? 
Will you commit to serving your full two-year term for the people of San Francisco? What is this? What is this? Don't bother me with a question like that. <laughs> really? Really? Okay? Really? Is that Madam what I'm going to do? Yeah. Madam I don't. Those kind of questions are such a waste of my time. No, I'm. A, yes, sir. Waste of my time. Will you commit to serving your full two-year term? What a waste of time! Total waste of her time. She's got more important things to do, like unveil her portraits. And all of the peasants out there should be a very understanding of her greatness as she wraps up her time in Congress. If she doesn't want to serve the rest of her term, well, then she doesn't have to, dang it. So that's what's going on in our Washington leadership. No, many, not many answers from the White House. We do have some answers from the Senate. All of this is going to land on the desk of the House of Representatives. And of course, we'll see what they want to do about it.